Hey guys, I'm Miss Anna, the Youth Services Assistant Librarian for Decatur Public Library, and welcome to All About, where we'll talk about different people, places, and things from history. Today, we're talking about Melville Dewey, and I have a picture of him right here for you to look at. This is the man behind the Dewey Decimal System, which is the most widely used way to organize a library. Maybe you're familiar with it. We use it here at our library, just like your school library probably does. But before we dig into Melville Dewey, let's have a chat about two library terms real quick. The Dewey Decimal System and a card catalog. So first, the Dewey Decimal System. Our books are arranged into two groups, fiction books and nonfiction books. Fiction books aren't real. They're imaginary or made up. Nonfiction books are about real things, so facts and such. In the library, we use call numbers, which are the little sticker on the spine, to identify where these groups are located in our building. Fiction books are shelved by the author's last name, and nonfiction books are shelved based on their subject. When they're added to our catalog system, they're assigned a Dewey Decimal number, and that looks something, whoops, that looks something like this. They're numbers that tell you where to find the book on the shelf. And shelving books this way makes it so much easier to find things and to browse the shelves. By using the Dewey Decimal System to shelf, you are able to visit the library and find books you might be interested in easier. But here's a fun fact. Before 1876, every library was organized differently. So imagine with me for a moment. We'll go back over 200 years and pretend it's the year 1819. Alabama has just become a state. James Monroe is the fifth president of the United States of America, and you walk into the public library in your city, and you're looking for horse books. Maybe in your hometown, horse books are shelved in the Wild West section. But then summer comes along, and you travel south an hour or so to stay with your grandparents for a few months. And while visiting your grandparents, you decide to visit their local library, and you're looking for horse books still. But horse books aren't shelved in the Wild West section because south with your grandparents, they're shelved in the farming section, like that. Well, then fall rolls around, and you're going back home. And when you visit home again, your library, you find that they've rearranged their books. So horse books aren't in the Wild West section anymore. They are in the animal section. Confusing, right? And a little inconvenient. Whenever you went to a library, you had to find a worker and ask them how their books were arranged. Now, the second term I want to talk about is the card catalog. What is the card catalog? When you come into our library, you use a catalog website on our computer to search for a book. And this catalog tells you where to find that book in our building. Well, your parents and grandparents might remember it a little differently from their childhood. This big wooden cabinet with all these drawers is a small example of what the card catalog used to be here at Decatur Public Library. There was no computer, there was no website, there was no iPad. Instead of typing in a book or an author in the computer, you'd walk to this cabinet and pull out a drawer. And inside each drawer were cards the size of an index card. And these cards were filled with information about a book and where to find it in a library. And I have an example of one of those cards right here. It's a little wrinkled. So these cards, they're filled with information about a book and where to find it within the library. And you could flip through all these drawers, uh, looking at books based on the author, title, or subject. The catalog was being used as early as the 1860s in Europe and in a few American libraries. Want to know what the catalog looked like before this? They were these massive, expensive, giant bound books with information printed inside. This book isn't actually a catalog book. Um, our library didn't have anything like that, but it would be something like this, something huge and heavy and just massive, ornate. Um, Usually, these books were only used by library staff members, and they became outdated rather quickly. Basically, as soon as any new book was added to the library collection, this 
beautiful, massive, expensive, giant bound book was outdated. And that brand new book that outdated this book, librarians had to decide where to shelve that item and how to record it without messing up the order of anything else in the library. And that wasn't an easy task. Well, the constant disorganization of libraries was an issue that bothered a lot of librarians and a lot of librarians tried to come up with solutions and Melville Dewey was one of those librarians. This man was born in 1851 in New York and as a young boy he loved dictionaries. He loved them so much that a family friend remarked that there was rarely a household meal in which Dewey did not consult the dictionary for one reason or another. And he actually loved um, education and reading as well. When he was 17 years old, his school caught fire and Dewey found himself running into the building and rescuing books from the library and inhaling a great deal of smoke while he did so. In fact, he inhaled so much smoke that the doctor said he'd be dead within two years. But that didn't happen because two years later, when he was 19 years old, he went to Amherst College in Massachusetts. And there he began working as a library assistant and there he grew very frustrated at how inefficient the collection was arranged. So he decided to create an organization system for the books. He visited other local libraries, he chatted with those librarians, and he discussed what systems they used. In this book, the card catalog from the Library of Congress, um, the author writes, it says, um, while still an undergraduate at, at Amherst, Dewey was obsessed with bringing order to the school's library. And he recounted that while daydreaming dur during a long lecture one day, <clears throat> without hearing a word, my mind absorbed the vital problem the solution flashed over me so that I jumped in my seat and came very near shouting, Eureka! That was my Dewey voice because that was a quote. This Eureka moment he had was to take the different organization systems he had discussed with librarians over the years and merge them into one system. And this system would group all books about one subject into one spot. So some libraries used numbers to group these different subjects. And that's what Dewey used. He used numbers. But these numbers weren't just an address. Each number had a special meaning and was used to create organization between all the different subjects. So for instance, Dewey assigned zoology books to the 500 section, specifically the 590 section. And that's probably the most popular spot in our library, the 590 animal books. If any number is between 590 and 599, it involves an animal. And all the animal books aren't just thrown into the 590s. They're carefully and meticulously arranged. And within each range, each number has its own more specific subject. So take these three numbers, for instance. I already have them written down right here. We have 597, 598, and 599. So, 597, this is where all your vertebrate books will be. So we're talking sharks, alligators, frogs, fish. Um, 598 are all of your bird books. So owls, eagles, and cranes, if you want to learn about a toucan, you'll go to the 598 section. And 599 is where all of your mammal books will be. So let's see. So we're talking about lions, elephants, deer, and zebras. But what about the decimal part? The decimal part is a way to further organize a book. So for instance, all the lion books, they would be 599.75. They would all be right there together. Um, all the elephant books might be in a different spot and all the deer books would be in another spot and so on and so on and so on. Uh, 
This wave of organization caught on quickly. By 1873, three years after Dewey began working at the Amherst College Library, he had the college using his decimal system. By 1876, he had published the system for other libraries to use. So that library you visited with your grandparents with the horse books? After 1876, chances are that their collection would be shelved the exact same way as your hometown. The Dewey Decimal System made it so much easier to locate library materials and is Dewey's most renowned accomplishment during his lifetime. But Melville Dewey did a lot more for libraries than just that. He founded the first library school in 1889, he launched a company for library supplies and furniture, and he helped found the American Library Association, which is an organization that helps promote education in libraries across the country. One thing that we can all take away from Dewey's legacy is that there's always room for change and improvement. Dewey, he saw a problem, a disorganized library. He looked for a solution by educating himself on how others handled the same problem, and he used those answers to create a solution. And what's better, he shared his idea with others who put it into action. We should constantly be keeping our eyes open for opportunities to improve our world, no matter how big or small. So, as we wrap up this video, I want you to ask yourself, what in your daily life can you change to make better? Take a hint from Melville Dewey and look for a more organized way to make your life easier. And that's all I have today. Thanks. Bye.